Welcome to my spatial analysis podcast. Today I am going to be talking to you about a particular uh, point pattern analysis technique known as Ripley's K function. And I will actually be demonstrating the technique using some ecological data that I'm going to collect from right here in my own backyard. Now, the data that I will be analyzing to demonstrate uh, Ripley's K function um, will be uh, these weedy dandelions that right now are everywhere on my uh, back lawn. And um, so this will be my point data set. I will define a, a study area and then um, pose a few questions about uh, whether or not these dandelions or just randomly distributed, or whether or not there's some kind of ecological process going on that uh, causes these dandelions to either cluster, um, you know, maybe related to uh, dandelion reproduction, or um, maybe they're uh, they're dispersed, they're regularly spread over uh, over my lawn, and uh, in that case, you may um, hypothesize that. Uh, but there's some kind of competition going on between dandelions for, uh, you know, lawn space. Um, so that's my data set. So I find my study area. It's a 400 square foot area on my lawn, a square 20 foot on a side. It's a relatively uh, level area and uh, free of some of the trees in the backyard. Um, now, Ripley's k function is a distance-based function, so you're really analyzing the distances between your points or your events. And uh, but there are other methods, um, and there are density-based methods, where, uh, for example, I could take my study area and uh, grid it into uh, into units, square units. I could do um, could it in a square foot unit, and I have like 400 of them. I could do a, a two foot square unit and it would give me 100. Um, and so then I, I know the average density um, of dandelions on the lawn in my study area. Say if there's 200 uh, dandelions, uh, I would have an average density of um, 0.5 dandelions uh, per square foot. Um, so based on that, I could develop a frequency distribution based on probability. Um, and that would tell me how many, um, the count of how many quadrants I would expect to find, you know, zero dandelions, or how many I would expect to find one dandelion, two dandelions, etc., up to you know, 20 dandelions in a, in a unit. Um, and so that's based on probability theory. And so then I could actually uh, look at my observed data and count the number of units that don't have any dandelions and then have one, two, three, um, and then compare the two, the expected and the observed. And for example, if I uh, had a, a, a number of units that had an extremely high uh, number of dandelions within them, say 20, and by probability theory tells you by chance there is you know a point zero 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 one chance of that happening. Um, I'd pretty pretty safe to assume that I have some clustering going on. And on the other hand, if um, you know maybe zero, one, or two um, uh, counts were overrepresented and we had few, very few um, large number of counts, uh, fewer than would be expected, then there may be some dispersal or regularity going on. But that, that's a density-based measure. And uh, as, as you could probably de um, uh, figure out, that that really in part is determined on the size of, of the grid unit that you, that you determine, and, and you really only determine one. Um, or you could do some other, uh, you know, define a kernel and, and do it like that. 
but basically you get, you get one you know size or one grid unit, one kernel size with a certain radius and whatnot. Um, so and now distance based measures also have some of those limitations where like nearest neighbor where you basically are using distance uh, as uh, your main um, uh, criterion but you're only looking at say the nearest neighbor, the first nearest neighbor or the second nearest neighbor or the third nearest neighbor um, and so you can really only pick one and so what happens if you have clustering among you know your first second third neighbors but then among your fourth fifth sixth neighbor uh, you're dispersed well you could do a bunch of nearest neighbors for the different neighbors but um, the reason I really uh, like Ripley's k-function is that within one statistic you can look at uh, multiple scales of uh, patterning from uh, you know zero to maybe say uh, a radius of say half my my study area here um, well a radius of one-fourth my study area a diameter of about half the study area and uh, so from zero to twenty feet I could look at patterns of clustering or regularity okay I have completed my uh, mapping exercise I've uh, plotted 263 uh, blooming dandelions in my study area and uh, so now it's ready to be converted into um, you know digital format using the, the XY coordinates uh, from my uh, paper map um, and uh, then I'll, I'll be ready to bring it into a statistical package or a GIS package and perform the, the Ripley's K function. Now there, there's a few things about um, assumptions that need to be met to to actually perform Ripley's K functions, and you know it's pretty safe to say that in a small study area, you know it's a pretty uh, homogeneous uh, area. Um, I wouldn't expect um, say intensity to vary within my study area. Uh, it, it's the same process going on everywhere. Nothing special about any one location, the, the hydrology, and the soil, or there's no competing plants. They're, they're all the same, and it really doesn't matter the direction. So rotation of the data doesn't shouldn't matter. Um, the process that we're looking at of, of possible uh, related to reproduction and competition. Um, so I, I'm pretty pretty feel pretty good about. Um, Assuming that we're, we, we met the assumptions that, that are required uh, to perform Ripley's escape function. Well, now I'll try to, to uh, kind of talk you through an explanation of Ripley's K function in, in a very general level. I've already mentioned that it's a multi scalar uh, technique and that I could determine, you know, clustering, regularity, randomness for a, a continuum. Uh, distances within my study area. That is that um, since I know the intensity or the density of dandelions in my study area because I've counted 263 for within this 400 square foot area, that um, if I was to take a radius of you know any size up to one fourth my study area, that I should be able to uh, determine the expected number of dandelions that would be uh, within that radius, say, if I center it on any uh, dandelion in my study area. And so, you know, by, by basically changing that, you know, R of uh, radius, um, and as it moves out, you know, the density changes. So, you know, at, at one scale, you know, you may, it may be consistent with the expected uh, density or intensity for say randomness but you get at a larger scale then you may see clustering so that's that's what's uh, particularly uh, useful about Ripley's K function so now I will uh, move inside and uh, do some computer work